Hi everyone, uh, today I wanted to talk about a subject that I haven't really wanted to tackle or shoot a video on because it's just so much things to say and I don't know if I could put all of it together during a video without having to edit it too much. Uh, I kind of just wanted to roll it off the top of my head. So today I'm going to tackle the subject about why I have left competitive magic and it's for a variety of reasons but I think there's two major reasons. I think the first major reason is that Watsi believes that they should be or it appears to be at least that they're promoting heavily of magic arena. Now I understand the benefit of Magic Arena. It's definitely a more polished product than MTGO. Um, it also is very user friendly as opposed to the latter. And for new users, uh, it's very easy to pick up. It's very similar to Earthstone in a sense. And the system behind it with the microtransaction, it's just another way to make money. I understand that. It's a great product. I'm not complaining about that. But at the same time with how the arena mythic championships and tournaments are being pushed towards it and the lack of coverage of actual paper magic, I believe that WotC is actually pushing out the card community. And that's I know that's a very radical statement, but as a competitive magic player who loves attending GPs or should I say magic fests, from now on, I will never refer to them as Magic Fest. I'll always refer to them as Grand Prix because that's what they are. But I enjoy playing those. And the fact that they're not going to be as highlighted and covered as much, it's kind of disappointing. It makes the the average grinder or magic enthusiast, magic enthusiast harder to keep up with magic. And they can only watch whatever WotC um, or the event staff choose to air on stream or twitch or whatever so that's one of the reasons why um, i just feel that magic is built on a community and paper promotes that community you go to a local game store you interact with people you make new friends you meet with old friends that's one of the things that drove me to playing magic is because my group of friends and my team that i play with that's who I go to play Magic for. I don't go to play Magic. I mean, I do go to local game store to play FNM or events, but I go more importantly because of the people that will be there. I get to kill like two birds with one stone, so to speak. I get to enjoy a game that I enjoy playing, as well as spend time with the people that I want to spend time with. You know, it's a double whammy. But with online Magic like Arena, it's just me sitting in front of a computer. That's no different than me sitting in front of a TV screen playing video games or watching TV all day. That's not helping the community. So that's one of the major reasons why I don't want to be playing Magic anymore. I don't want to endorse that ideology of, you know, going from paper magic to online magic. And the second reason why is because of the changes that I've made to the Pro Tour or as they rebranded it, Mythic Championship, as and I will, from this, for, from this point on, also will never consider them Mythic Championships. I'll always consider them the Pro Tour because that's what it was. It's, in other terms, also called, nicknamed the Promotional Tour. It's not really for the pros. It's for a more of Watsi to, you know, promote the game. And I get that. Um, having been on the Pro Tour, I understand the significance of the Pro Tour. But at the same time, I also understand that decentivizing going to the pro tour and by decentivizing i mean that the way to qualify and the way that waltz is handling if you get invited if you don't know that they have originally back then when i originally played first compete first com first time competitive rel uh, i'd say I don't know, six eight years ago they had the ptq system pro tour qualifiers where it's just one big tournament and the winner goes to the Pro Tour. And the winner would then get flight to the venue, wherever it was, whether it be local in the United States or overseas. And then a couple years back, they changed that Pro Tour system qualification 
to the RPTQ system, which is essentially you play in a smaller tournament. And if you win that, you get qualifies you for the regional pro tour. And in the regional pro tour where regional pro tour qualifier, whoever, like depending on how many people there are top two, top four, or if it was big enough, like I think top eight, I don't recall. It's, it's all convoluted at this point in time, but if you won at regional pro tour qualifier at the RPTQ, you then would go to the pro tour and then they would pay for the travel, which is like the flight. Um, that's how I qualified. I won a, uh, well, I don't remember what it was called. Uh, it was the step before the RPTQ, but I won one of those. And then I got invited to the RPTQ. Uh, the first one I, you know, I, I won a small, I won, I won a tournament. And the first time I qualified for the RPTQ, I didn't do so well. The second time I qualified for the RPTQ was standard, which I enjoyed more playing and, you know, tested heavily. And I made it to the, I believe it was top four. Made it to the top four and he got invited to the Pro Tour. And they paid for my flight to Hawaii, um, which was great. You know, that was as a competitive grinder of magic was expecting that with all my work and effort, I would get rewarded by not only being invited to the Pro Tour, but having been sent there by WotC. And to be honest with you, I don't think, well, personally, I'm not quite sure, I can't speak for all the community, but I feel that being invited to the Pro Tour is, you know, it does have its prestige, but I think it's more importantly is the fact that they are sending you there. I think that's that's the, the glory of being on the Pro Tour is that they will send you there and you get to, you know, be with all the rest of the pros. You don't have to pay your way for your flights, wherever it is, because that's how it is now. They've changed the system back to a Pro Tour qualifier, Pro Tour qualifier system where you play in one big tournament now and the winner will will go to the Pro Tour, but they have to pay for their own travel expenses, including the flight. And this can be a little taxing for your average grinder because one, there's a lot of expenses in playing Magic to begin with, like the decks are expensive, and then you have to travel to these, you know, PTQs, and then you have to compete in these PTQs, and these PTQs aren't exactly cheap. And yeah, you do get promo cards and it might be worth your, your time and effort. But the fact is that it's a lot of time spent and you can never replace time with money. And then even if you do win the Pro Tour Qualifier, you have to come up with the money yourself. Granted, people will say, well, you know, hopefully the venue will, you know, the whoever's holding the tournament will help you pay for, you know, the price pool. They will help you pay for the ticket. I get that. But that, that kind of just adds a little bit more burden to the player who's won an invite to the Pro Tour. Um, it, 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 I see on Facebook people who are setting up GoFundMes because they can't afford the flight to a Pro Tour. Can you imagine, just, just, just imagine if you were a, you know, a college student, you know, college students have lots of debt already. They're going through a lot, you know, tough times, you know, starving student, and they play magic, you know, competitively. And, you know, they take the time and they grind and they win a Pro Tour qualifier. But the Pro Tour is in, let's say, Japan. You know, an average college student isn't going to afford, isn't going to be able to afford a trip to Japan for not only their flight, but their hotel expenses. Like, it's just it's just too much. And which is another one of the reasons why I, I just don't think for me personally, it's worth my time to put into competitive magic because... You know, I'll go to these events, I'll spend lots of money, I'll spend lots of time, which is most important to me because I have a very busy schedule. And at the end of it, I have to put it forth even more money. And I'm not saying that I wouldn't travel, but at that point in time is if I'm going to pay for my flight and my travel expenses, then I might as well go somewhere that I actually want to go to. You know, what if the pro tour is like, I don't, I don't know, I'm not saying there's bad countries or anything, but like, what if it's in a place that I don't want to go? Like, with the, the cost of me flying there and travel expenses, I might as well go somewhere that I do want to go. And yeah, I don't get to play in the Pro Tour, but let's be honest. One thing that I found from playing in the Pro Tour is that unless you have a team dedicated to testing magic consecutively days, days of preparation, it's going to be very difficult to, to place very high because you're playing against pros that do this for a living. That is their daytime job. And, you know, possibly a nighttime job, you know. But 
I find it very difficult, you know, to to grasp the pipe dream of playing on the Pro Tour and making it big and riding the train. Like, yes, I'm not saying that it's not possible, and there are people that I know who have grinded and have done that, but for your average Magic player, it's not going to come that easy. And, you know, people will say, well, that was you, Danny. That's, you know, that's that's not, you know, me. I'm different. Well, then, you know what? Go for it, all right? I, you know, I'm not trying to rain on anyone's parade. I'm not trying to stop you from your dreams. But I, I'm just giving you my feedback of what my experience is and why I am not playing in the, you know, the magic circuit anymore. But today, given it's July 1st, I do have exciting news. That is, today is the first day of the 2020 Pokemon competitive season start. And for those who don't know Pokemon, Pokemon is much like Magic. It does have a yearly schedule. And July 1st of 2019 is the start of the 2020 season. And with that, I am super excited to announce that I will be playing on the Pokemon circuit or competing on the Pokemon circuit by attending uh, what we call the regionals. I guess they're the equivalent of grand prix for Poke for magic but i will be traveling to regionals throughout this year once the schedule is released it has not been released yet and i will be shooting for worlds of 2020 and for those of you who might be wondering you know what's worlds pokemon well in pokemon if you make worlds by qualifying through points they have a pointing system if you place very high at regionals or you know smaller tournaments but if you hit a cap or a certain point limit um you get flown with travel expense to the world's venue which is what i guess you could say the pro tour used to be like but this is playing on a world level for pokemon and i am really excited for the year to come and a lot of people are saying like well why are you announcing it like who cares well it's not necessarily just for you guys it's for more of i'm saying it and i'm going to dedicate it uh, for me because when I was shooting for the Pro Tour, I had a goal that I was going to make the Pro Tour in one year. Um, I told my fiance at the time that, you know, give me one year and I'm going to grind and compete uh, Magic competitively. I'm going to go all out and if in one year I don't make the Pro Tour, then I'm going to hang my hang my coat up. And um, lo and behold, I think believe the last month before that year ended, I ended up making the Pro Tour. So... Um, and then now that's done, I guess it's time to move on to the next thing. And once again, I've told my wife now that, you know, um, I'm really into Pokemon right now. Give me one year um, since the season's about to start. And let me try to make Worlds for 2020. And then after that, uh, we'll see from there. So I'm super happy to be, you know, competing, uh, looking forward to competing. I'm just waiting for the schedule. So uh, I, 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 I'm hoping to bring more content for Pokemon since uh, magic i won't be participating in anymore um you know i'm not saying that i'm not gonna keep up with it and i'll, I'll my friends do play it um I'll, I'll i'll you know listen and read the new strategies and you know see new cards maybe play a pre-release here or two but for competitive magic um i'm, I'm hanging my, my coat and i'm putting on a new jacket for pokemon um, competitive events so i look forward to what 2020 brings with the competitive season and i'm happy to bring you guys along for the trip so until next time, guys, thanks for listening, and I'll see you guys in the next video.